Hi folks, I'm Father Joe Grimaldi, and you can call me Joe, and I'd like to welcome you to my podcast. But now, here's our host and friend, Ken Calvert. Hi everybody, I'm Ken Calvert, alongside Pastor Father Joe Grimaldi, and we would like to welcome you to the Father Joe Grimaldi Podcast. Well, this one is just for the friends of the Father Joe Grimaldi Podcast. Going on right now at Hoot McInerney Star Lincoln, you can enjoy the opportunity to build your Lincoln. That's right. Visit our showroom in Southfield, Michigan, or simply log on to StarLincoln.com. You can build your Lincoln Corsair. How about a Nautilus, the Aviator, or the beautiful navigator experience the power of sanctuary in your custom ordered lincoln vehicle you pick the color the interior the wheels and you can choose between gas or your plug-in hybrid the benefits that come from owning a lincoln certified pre-owned vehicle will exceed your expectations Hoot and McInerney Star Lincoln, located on 12 Mile Road, just east of Telegraph, in beautiful Southfield. Or you can always visit us at StarLincoln.com. Star Lincoln, home of the Father Joe Star Treatment. How are you, Father Joe? I'm just doing great. How about you now, Ken? Oh, another day, another A. That's good. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Especially for our Canadian friends. Another day, eh? Uh, hey. You know, when I was thinking about this, I, I remember back in the day when I was on the radio, and that wasn't that long ago, but uh, and sometimes still am, I should say. The Canadians, you know, the Canadians, we always used to say they always ended every expression with A. Yeah. So you're going down to the rink to play some pond hockey, eh? And so I used to do that on the air, right? And we had a lot of Canadian listeners, right? right. Being, being right on the Detroit-Windsor border. In fact, my father was half Canadian. Anyway, I they used to call me up and say, you know, you're always making fun of us, eh? Do you realize what you guys always say at the end of your sentences? I thought about it for a moment, and I thought, we just end our sentences. And the guy said, oh, no. His name was Bob. He said, you guys always end everything with, you know? He said, every time you say something, I got a vacation day coming up, you know. And I started thinking, by golly, he's right. He's right. So we have to think about that I now. never thought about yeah, it. Yeah, I never ahead. say A at the end of the sentence, but I yeah. know that I say you know, and I also know that I say okay a lot. Well, with that said, shall we begin? Sure. And then we go to the notes. And it goes like this. Each and every day, Father, Pastor, Joe Grimaldi, the Pope goes to his window at 12 noon every day, although it's different around the world, but... Francis goes to his window each and every day, and he reads the Angelus. Let's discuss the prayer, the Angelus. Its roots, how long has it been around? I mean, can you start there? How long has the Angelus been around? I have no idea. No idea. Okay. The reason I don't know is because we don't say it anymore. I mean, it's not a... Yeah, well, that's that's a good point. Uh, yeah. The angel of the Lord declared to Mary. To Mary, and she conceived the Holy Spirit. And then we say the Hail Mary. See, it's to remind us that we have a God who is man and God. Mm -hmm. And so you would take time during the middle of the day to remember that we are creatures of that God. And God loves us and so on. And we appreciate that he was born into our humanity because that's what it emphasizes of the humanity, because it's a prayer because of the Blessed Mother, because the Hail Mary is what's said after each verse, but by the same token, it really refers to Christ being both man and God. The angel of the Lord declared to Mary, and she conceived the Holy Spirit. The way it's done, apparently, in some homes, some churches perhaps, it's done up to three times a day. And the, Not anymore. Well, I, I, I don't want to disagree with you. No, but, uh, no, but I'm just saying perhaps in some homes, maybe it is. But some not, don't even know what it is. But I, that's, that's where I was going to yeah. go. But anyway, according to what I read, and this is from the Catholic News Agency, the Angelus is a very old prayer from our Catholic heritage. It was traditionally prayed three times. Once in the morning, once at midday, once in the afternoon, at the prompting of the church bells. The entirety of the prayer can be prayed by a single person, or if multiple people are present, one person, 
let's say the leader will lead the others who will say the response. That's just what I have here. So the leader would say, the angel of the Lord declared to Mary, and the response would be, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit, and then we would all say a Hail Mary. The leader would say, behold the handmaid of the Lord, and the respondents would say, me according to your word. and then we would say another Hail Mary. And then the leader would say, and the word was made flesh, and dwelt amongst us. And we would say another Hail Mary, and then we would say, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises, promises of Christ. Let us pray. We would all continue from there. But you were telling me that you were praying the Angelus every day for how many days? Well, because we were in a religious community and we did do the leader response way of doing it, mm -hmm. and then it changes when it's after Easter. The Lord has risen just as he said he would, and so on and so forth. But basically, it's a prayer that I don't know if it's unfortunate or fortunately people do substitute it with something else and mental prayer and meditation. But most people that you would ask, most Catholics that you would ask, would not know what that is, the Angelus. And the Angelus is called the Angelus because it refers to the angel of God. That's the way it starts. And so they keep that first word, the angel of the Lord declared unto Mary. So the angel is the one they remember. So that's the name of the prayer is the Angelus. Now, as they say, if you were to ask most Catholics today, have no idea what that is. Now, somebody has immortalized it, and that's a French painter, a beautiful painting that depicts the farmers stopping midday as they listen to the bells ring. And then they recite the Angelus. I see another possibility why it has died out uh, is because we don't have church bells, okay? Yeah. Uh, except in country churches. There's a good reason for it, because in the city, people do not want to be disturbed at morning, noon, and night. And so that's when the bells would ring. So you would have them early in the morning and people trying to sleep and they have to go to work, so they would notify the church that this is happening, so the church would have to stop ringing the bells. I know that, for example, I had many years experience in Hawaii, and we always had the bells ring early in the morning, and because it upset the people, we had to stop, because there was an area where people lived around the school, see, and around the parish. Now, if you live in Rome, there's all these different cophony almost, a cacophony of sounds, different sounds, beautiful, at different times of the day. They almost act like a band or a, an orchestra because sure. these bells are ringing throughout the city around the same time. What I'm getting at, because we've become too sophisticated, we live in cities, many people, so you're not allowed to have the church bells ringing. Matter of fact, very often, even though you have the dirge or the, the bells after a funeral, in some cases you have to get permission to do that because of the city zoning, zoning type things? and so on and so forth. So you're not allowed to ring the bells anytime you want, okay? Cut it out. Oh, for real, no. That's wow. True, yeah. I could understand. People don't want to be disturbed, especially if they work during the night, they sleep during the day, and they hear the banging of the bells, and it wakes them up. So... There's lots of reasons. Now, Rome has not come up with anything like that, but okay. in the United States, we have to be very careful. So, I think because we don't have the bells, ordinarily, if you're in a country, usually you do. The bells were supposed to bring the people to church. Yeah. So they rang about five minutes beforehand, so people would come. They know that Mass would begin in five or ten minutes, and that's when they would gather around the church. So that custom is gone. We certainly don't hear bells in the city, or very seldom. So it wasn't the direct cause. But we live in a society where we're on the move all the time. We don't take time at noon. Some people don't even have lunch at noon because they constantly are working, and yeah, so yeah. they don't stop. Yeah. And, and so then to stop at dinner, you know, people don't want to do that either. So... It's a custom that was beautiful. It did last for a while. 
the painter by the name of Malay, I found out. I knew that it was uh, abstract paintings. I never realized that it was M-I-L-L-E-T. Malay, Mm -hmm. he's the one who immortalized the custom of the Angelus because of the two, three farmers that had stopped in the middle of the fields as they listened to the bells and said the Angelus. And the name of the painting is The Angelus. Now it's almost... It's almost two topics in one, which I like. Uh-huh. happens all the time. That's what happens when a couple of friends get together and start talking about the church and the various things that go on in the church that some know, some don't, and some know a little bit about but wanted to know more, like me. So I find more of a topic about the bells, but we'll get back to that in a second. The Angelus is something that at Sacred Heart, your parish... Didn't you say that you were saying the Angelus for a number of days throughout the Christmas season or not? No. They don't say it. It's a custom from the past. Um, It's a nice custom, but um, it's gone. It's gone. Uh But the Pope, he says it every day at 12 noon. It's a Catholic tradition. Well, I think that maybe he, those people that like Francis, and there are plenty that do, and there are some that don't, ought to take that and maybe possibly incorporate it into their day. But you know what it can be? It can be like our lunches. If if you have time at 10.30 or 11 o'clock, if you'd like an early lunch, have an early Angelus. Well, now you just buzz killed me. No, I just... <laughs> you know. <laughs> what can I say to something like that? I mean, trying to bring back the Angelus, you know what I mean? Well, uh, it's kind of like breakfast 24 hours a day, okay? No. <laughs> Let me say this. It's not just Francis. All popes right. do it, okay? It's part of the tradition of the church to have the Angelus at noon. Yeah, but he also does it with the windows and the bells. So, so that so all me, popes did. Uh, uh, well, okay, if you say so. No, but I, I okay, know so. Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> well, I know you spent a good deal of time in Rome, so I've yet to go. But, you know, after COVID, I'll go, I promise you. And, yeah, but that's a custom of the church mm-hmm. to have that done. Whether or not the rest of the church does it is another story, because I don't think it is done anymore. If you were to ask Catholics, even what it was, they wouldn't tell you what it is. Maybe they would have heard of it sometime. It depends on how old they are. All right, can I tell you something? Yeah. I had to do a lot of looking, because I may have been thinking there's an area around here called Lake Angeles. And maybe That's I was, right. Maybe I was thinking of that, but at least... Angel's Lake. Yeah, Angel's Lake, okay. And that's what, obviously, Angelus stands for. What is it's the Latin. Latin word for angel? Well, I like our wide-open discussions. Like yes, this. I think course. I think these are fun and they're charming for the people to listen to. I this. hope so. Maybe they're out walking and going, <laughs> these two have lost their minds today. <laughs> but we are talking about the bells, the bells, the ringing of the bells. Why is it then... We are talking about two topics now, the Angelus, and we're talking about the bells, or the lack thereof of the bells, especially in bigger cities, because grumpy people don't want bells. Correct. How come sometimes I hear bells off in the distance, and sometimes I don't, on a Saturday afternoon? You know why I think when I hear bells on a Saturday afternoon? Because somebody just got married, and that's why I think I'm hearing bells. Is that possibly correct sir of course it is and why is it that then it's okay to ring the bells because no i didn't say that you're saying that i'm sorry (laughs) all right well then why because it's not too often you hear that so do you think are you going to tell me that the church one of the things that the pastor may have to look into or perhaps the minister because other churches have bells and use bells not in the morning or later in the day But I have heard some churches in our area use bells at 3 o'clock, maybe, or 1 o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. And I'm assuming that might be a wedding. Would they have to get permission from the city to do that? It's not a wedding. It's usually a funeral. And so it's the death knell, it's called. Mm -hmm. It's timed. Bang, bang. Bang. So it's a set rhythm for it, and it's called the death knell. Uh-huh. Now, that would notify in the old farming communities, oh, that must be for Mary Jones. She passed away, you know. Well, if they weren't at the church for the funeral. So. Right. Now, you could, it's interesting you say weddings, because 
in some places, if you want the bells rung after the bride comes out, you have to pay extra. <laughs> <laughs> but usually there are no bells, okay? So, but, well, I think that's what they call with the bells and whistles. You want everything, you got to yeah, pay more, okay? But, great <laughs> point, great point. But anyway, yeah, so. Yeah, that's a great It's point. kind of an interesting point you bring up because, I mean, it's rare that you hear bells, okay? Yeah. Matter of fact, most churches don't have bells anymore. They used to, that used to be part of the structure of the sure. church. Sure, well, that's why, yeah, the and steeple was. I could see it be fun to. Well, Go in there and hang on. Oh, to the and ropes yeah. And <laughs> well, then they eventually went to those good loudspeakers and just yeah. bought the CD of Correct. bells. Somebody just had to make sure that they didn't put the death knell in. St. Hugo's has a beautiful uh, system. As a matter of fact, they even have concerts of the bells. And well, they have an organ, uh, and the pipes and all of those were made or somewhere outside of the United States, I Correct, believe. Yeah. But, I mean, they have the bells for the yeah. concerts. And they have they actually have this big thing that they can throw with their fists. They're like big levers, if you want, yeah. that will actually ring those bells. And the maintenance for the bells were always incredible, too. I mean, they were always very expensive. But a lot of places did still take advantage of their towers, and they just put really, really good-sized speakers in there, and they would do that. Now, if I were a bride and groom, I would like the bells to be ringing as you come walking out of the church so that everyone could hear the bells ringing. That's what they usually are used. Yeah, but the celebration I, going on. to answer on. your question there, I have not heard in the last few years of anybody doing it. Not anybody doing it. But yeah. it used to be done for extra charge. You could have the bells rung after Mass. All right, well, let's just And say I hate to be crass, but it's a custom... Unfortunately, we've lost a lot of our customs we have. Yeah. And I don't want to sound like a curmudgeon, but by the same token, things have gone away. And so one of them is the bells. Now, in farm communities, when there's hardly anybody around, you could ring the bell all you want, and it won't matter. But in cities, you have to be a lot more careful. Or in neighborhoods where people are trying to sleep if they've worked all night, or too early in the morning, or whatever the case might be. Yeah. So they figured it'd be too much of a hassle to start asking for permission to ring those bells, and so they don't. Now, most churches that are built today, that's one of the places where they say they don't have that tower for the bells, yeah. okay? Yeah. So it's a nice idea, it's a nice custom, but unfortunately it's gone by the wayside. Well, fortunately for the listeners, neither one of us have gone by the wayside. No, we're still here. <laughs> yeah, we're still here. So, <laughs> Whether you like it or not. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'll tell you what, I wish I had a bell right here I'd ring it. Uh, sometimes he would like to ring my bell. But a boom but a bing that's all the time I have, ladies and gentlemen. So, Father Joe, thank you for talking to us about or reintroducing us or possibly even introducing us to the Angelus Prayer. And perhaps our listeners will look up more about the Angelus Prayer. And perhaps on occasion, maybe they want to start with Angelus Light and just do it themselves once a week. Sure. Okay, why not? It's a good chance to say a few Hail Marys. And who doesn't like a few good Hail Marys? Right. And we could even say a Hail Mary for the prayer if you'd like. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God pray, pray for, for us sinners, sinners now, now and at the, the hour, hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. God bless you. This is Father Joe Grimaldi, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the Father Joe Podcast. If you'd like, you can email us. It's F-R-J-O-E-P-O-D-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. That's F-R-J-O-E-P-O-D-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. We're also on Facebook. Simply search Father Joe Grimaldi. And thanks for listening, everyone.